Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Dogbot333, and welcome back to Tartarin 4, the New Order, last days of Europe. Now, last time we hopped into Ho Hoi 4 for good old pre recorded series was uh, the U.S. of A. We hopped in as Richard Nixon. A bunch of stuff happened. Long story short, we got Robert Kennedy. And then, long, on, slightly longer story short, we went to John Glenn. And we had a good time. I don't want to just talk about what happens too much because that's still uploading. And I don't want to give too many spoilers. But um, it's a fun series. If you haven't checked it out, please do. And uh, while I'm asking you guys uh, about stuff, I'm going to ask everyone who's watching this a favor. If you're not subscribed already, please do. I'm trying to make uh, my 1,000 sub milestone by the end of this month, the end of a year. Round this year off in a nice direction. I have some sub goals going on for 800, 900, 1000. I'm doing Koi 4 gives giveaways. Uh, when I hit hit each milestone, I'm also doing starting certain series once I hit that milestone. So 800, I'm going to be playing as Japan. 900, I'm going to be playing as Omsk. And for 1000 subs, we're going to be playing as the funny Bergsis man. Funny clock man, Sergei Dabritsky himself, and Comey. I didn't think I'd be going back to Comey this quickly, but I th a lot of people have asked for it. The memes are unescapable at this point. And so, if you guys help me get to 1,000 subs, then I'll take a swing at it. We'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and do it. But, until then, it's time to go ahead and check out some of the new stuff in Cutting Room Floor. Because the new update is out, and I don't think we've played a nation that's gotten or a path that's gotten fully fleshed out and added this time at least fully i think the day it released we played ireland over on twitch via a twitch channel which if you haven't checked that out i'll link down in the description below but didn't finish that up i'm probably going to re-record it and uh give another give another swing but we're going to be playing a very interesting nation that got content very interesting path, I should say. And I didn't think I'd be interested in doing this nation at all. But I saw um, a fellow by the name of Einstein. Is a thousand, there's a bunch of fucking numbers after. I, I don't remember off the top of my head. But he's one of the devs for TNO, a French fella. And he was playing. Let's see if I can load it up. Nazi Germany. And there's a new path I was at. I don't know if any of you know it. Um, I mean, if you're reading the title, you probably know it. But it turned out to be very, very interesting. More so than I thought it was going to be. So I figured we're going to go ahead and take it out. But first, let's take a look at Germany at the start of the game. Once humbled by the failures in the Weltkrieg, Germany once more rose to prominence with the leadership of Adolf Hitler in the 1930s. Thanks to the failures of allies, World War II has ended in complete German victory. Germany now presides over the most powerful empire on earth, but despite her victory, Germany's control remains tenuous at best. Racked by economic crash, has froze the nation for a decade, and massive slave caste providing for the German people, the population has begun to protest. The nation now is trapped in a series of student protests in the machinations of the Reichsbank. Now, we already played a Spear game b uh, before, which if you haven't checked that out, I'm, I'm asking you guys to check out a lot of stuff, I realize, but uh, check that out, because that's probably my favorite series as of yet that I've ever done on it, but I didn't think I'd be hopping in as Jeremy so quickly, but the new Hydra content, which we'll get into eventually, it is interesting. Um, I'm not going with the graphics mod I've been using for the past couple series, just because, um, I think this is a, a vanilla's easier to make out borders, and um, that might be useful in this series. And that's all I'm going to say about that. So, we're going to go ahead and start. I'll go ahead and whip my timer out. We're going to be doing a one hour long part uh, all from here for this first part, so we can get... Uh, working on some of the, you know, get it done, or get this started, then get to some of the good stuff. This is all going to be a bit of set, set up stuff that you've already seen in the Spear campaign. So if you've seen some of that before, um, it might be more or less the same, especially at the very start. But I'm guessing as it goes along, there's going to be some new flavor coming. 
So we are becoming the sick man right now. I'm going to take a sip of water. Mmm. Hydrating. Over the course of the two most destructive wars in history, Germany lost everything only to gain the world. The Thousand Year Reich soared over the pathetic allies of the Second World War, crushing resistance against its fierce great ambition in both the West and East and marching its army farther than it ever had before. Although it came at a great cost, as all wretched wars do, even American resistance was ultimately halted in the wake of nuclear fire. Finally, Germany had won, its honor restored, and its destiny made manifest. The Reich wasted no time following its victory, and immediately embarked on reshaping Europe in its own image, one of national socialism, cleansed of the degenerate bourgeois, and freed from the grasp of lonely Untermensch, Lebensraum in the east finally became achievable and was, alongside the Atlantropa Dam, the Mediterranean, Mediterranean, and the Congo River Dam, fueled by the largest slavery apparatus the world had ever seen, the German prestige each project in the following years. They hear became the largest and most powerful army in the world, protecting German ambitions from the British Isles to the Russian Waste to the reinforce of Africa. Where once bitter in fighting Shed Brothers' blood, there now stood the Einatz back, guided by the Greater German Reich and its visionary leadership. It didn't take long for all that to crumble. The span of less than a decade, the German The German economy practically evaporated, following followed by the disgraceful West Russian War that brought the Reich to the brink of collapse and the betrayal of the SS orchestrated by none other than the nefarious Heinrich Himmler. Had not been for quick decisive action of Wehrmacht, the Reich would have collapsed. Still, the damage was done. The experience of the 50s combined with freedom from slavery and the reality of a world pressing down upon Germany has utterly destroyed the people's confidence in the government. No longer is the Reich the proud hegemon of the world. It's only merely a shadow itself, torn by shameless infighting and united only in its sphere for the future. So we have four potential candidates. We have... Well, we have Hitler, of course, the main guy, Martin Bormann, who we're not worrying about, Hermann Göring, who we're not worrying about either, Albert Speer, we've already done that, Gang of Four, and here we are, Reinhard Heydrich, the Butcher of Prague, the Blonde Beast, the Young Evil God of Death. Many names have been conjured for Reinhard Heydrich, and yet none of them can accurately sum up the man that is almost universally reveled throughout the Reich. Head of a German SS, Heydrich's close relationship with Hitler, combined with his own cleverness and the general competence of the modern SS, is perhaps the only thing that has kept him from being exiled or worse long ago. As head of an organization that is the black sheep of Germany, mostly Heydrich is nothing more than Heinrich Himmler's puppet on a string, only serving as a figurehead for his nefarious agenda. Technically, Heydrich is a possible candidate for fearship. However, almost no political power and no more popular support, such a choice seems unlikely, in the event that Heydrich not only is selected as the next fear, but secures control over the Reich and defeats his competitors, the world can only quake at the thought of a proud supporter of the Burgundian system controlling one of the most powerful nations on Earth. Well, um, we'll go ahead and do a man on the moon. This is our moment, the culmination of decades of tiresome research and continuous advancement, headed by the brilliant Dr. Werner von Braun. The German Aerospace Center is ready to commence its greatest operation today, landing the first man on the moon. If successful, it will become the Reich's greatest scientific achievement since the weaponization of the atom. The space race has now come to an end. The dominant will of a national socialism, soon to triumph over the degenerate Americans and backwards Japanese once again, Heil Hitler. Speaking of which, we have the, the militarist GUI, which doesn't matter for our purposes. We'll scroll down. Um, our education rate is declining. Our poverty is declining. Our industrial expertise is declining. Our army professionalism is declining. We are doing fucking horrible. Speaking of horrible, Adolf Hitler. How does one begin to define Adolf Hitler, Führer and Reichskanzler of the Greater German Reich, the undisputed tyrant of 19 countries, the architect of Welthauptstadt Germania, Supreme Commander of Wehrmacht, Führer of a National Socialist German Workers' Party, and Time Magazine's Man of the Year in 1938, 1946, and 1961. A man of humble beginnings, the son of Austrian innkeepers, he was educated in Munich and Vienna, and served with distinction with the German army during the First World War. 
His rise to power was meteoric. None can deny, and even failed attempts like the Barrel Push served only to further his ambitions. His combination of violence and showmanship drove the communists and democrats out of the Reichstag and placed him in the Thai Eye's office. Under his leadership, Germany broke the chains of the Versailles Treaty, developed a terrifying new military, and forced other nations of Europe to their knees until a swastika flew all over Europe, from the shores of the Atlantic Ocean to the Black Sea. Under his guidance, the Reich built such wonders as Atlantropa and Germania, and under his watchful eye, the undesirables of Europe were viciously exterminated and fed to the flames. By the lord and master of Germany, all of Europe, between the Urals and the Pyrenees, has grown old. Where his voice could once command a crowd's rapt attention, there now only is a quiet rasping, and a cold calculating mind of steel has gone to rust. The hands that pen mind Kampf constantly tremble now as he adds the final touches to a watercolor of those long dead faces slipping from his memory. The greatest conqueror to the world has ever known since Nap Alexander and Napoleon is an old and frail man. In 1962, he is 73 years of age, and some dare to whisper that he is not long for the world. The fear of all the worlds that once a fierce funeral pyre is lit will spread the great conflagration of war all across Europe once more. So we have a couple focuses to banish want, not nice. The two principles, the Reich's survival hinges on the fear, not nice. And Sieg, very, very bad. And then gone over. We can't train units to spam them or edit templates at all. So I'm trying to figure out what we're going to want. We'll do some better weapons. Um, better anti-tank. What else? Ah, uh, shit, there's not really much I think we can do. Uh, we'll do combine operations. That's the best doctrine. Just about the best doctrine. Um, logistics companies. Fuck it. And then for free military factories... I think we're going to want to build a lot of guns. Maybe some artillery, some support equipment. And there we are. Okay, for economy. Uh, consumer goods. That's not bad. Division organization. I think we'll go ahead and up civilian spending. Yeah, construction speed. That's going to be great. And then whenever we can, we need to get working on a line of forts. We're going to build a couple along the Rhine River. And we're going to be doing some in Danzig and some in the province right here. And my hope is that we'll be able to actually start building some of these soon. We'll go and speed up. There we go. We're starting a little bit. The brown eminence. Um, this doesn't pertain too much. Do I want to read this? Ah, eh, sure. If one were to grave... Get grave. God. I'm already fucking up the reading. What am I doing? If one was to gaze upon the drab visage of this balding little man, it would be hard to view him as anything more than a stuffy bureaucrat, one single cog in the grand mechanism of the state. Such a miscalculation could be a potentially fatal mistake, as Chief of the Party Chancellor and Private Secretary of the Fear, Martin Bormann, has climbed the greasy rungs of Nazi Party in silent persistence, asking for neither fame nor excess on any step of his rise to authority. His friends and foes alike to refer to him mockingly as the Brown Eminence. Hee hee poop. Such a scatological slur means nothing to Borman, who cares little for humor and less for personal insults directed directly, uh, directed towards his character. He's not a man of prompt or ceremony, but of duty and dedication to the Reich. Many would claim he's rarely seeing, stepping out of the Fuhrer's gradually diminishing shadow, except those who whisper of his visits with young, beautiful actresses and models throughout the nation. As a new decade rolls on, Martin Borman continues to stalk the shadowy quarters of power in his ill-fitting suit, further enveloping himself in the mechanisms of the Reich's bureaucratic apparatus. Bizarre contradictions of such a despised man holding such enormous influence betrays a mind dedicated solely to the pursuit of power, whatever the main cause may be. In my dictionary, duties written in capitals. Um, I've got a lot of people asking, and also a lot of people ask for a Borman Let's Play. 
because he is Vicanon's successor, and people would be interested in that. Now, I do want to do that one of these days, but... Um, we'll, we'll come to that eventually. We'll just go ahead and do this for now. Get a field marshal. We're going with the Chad Han Spidell. Um, I don't know. We'll do this. The Gilded Reich Marshal. If the Fuhrer is a paternalistic ruler of the German Reich, then Hermann Göring is his popular uncle. Beloved by the civilians for his jolly demeanor and the Wehrmacht for promoting their interests throughout the decades, the Reich Marshal has always desired to maintain the reputation of a diligent military man, loyal to his Reich and his Fuhrer. To believe such a thing would be either to downplay the man's ambitions, having held many illustrious posts, from founder and chief of the Gestapo to the Reich. Plenipotentiary of the four-year plan, the aristocrat Attic Goring has developed a bluster of power, power and wealth few could rival. Residing in his enormous Curran Hall mansion with his vast collection of outfits, jewelry, and artwork, plundered from Reich's conquest, the, field mar the Reich Marshal continues to coalesce much influence around himself as possible. While not as close to Hitler as he once was, he's acquired relevance by becoming a de facto figure of a militarist movement. Some would argue that Goring is little more than a pompous buffoon, allowing himself to be puppeted by radical forces in hopes of acquiring even more attention and power. Others would find such a suggestion to be foolish, for Goring has long proven himself to be as manipulatively cunning as he is dedicated. His role in the future of Reich politics remains to be seen. My measures will not be crippled by bu bureaucracy. There we are. And then we get some more guys. Oh. Beautiful. I didn't mean to do that. <sighs> a figure often underlooked in convoluted politics of the Reich, Albert Speer is nonetheless one of its key players. Architected by profession, Speer was attracted to the Fuhrer's persuasive dialect. As soon as Hitler looked at Speer's war wait, fuck. Speer's power, Speer was attracted to future Fuhrer's persuasive dialect and his great plans for Germany. The attraction was mutual as soon as Hitler looked at Speer's work, the young architect found himself at the forefront of the party's leadership and was tasked with de designing dozens of public buildings. The war changed everything. Speer was appointed minister of the armaments during the most difficult time of conflict. It was very that a side of his personality made itself even more evident. Opportunism. He took the merit for Germany's production surge, but his main contribution to the war effort had been the invention of what would forever change the Reich. Slavery. Hundreds of thousands of inferior and war prisoners toiled and died in the military-industrial complexes, feeling the German war machine with their lives. After the war, Speer returned to his passion and single-handedly designed the Coleman of the Reich's grandeur. Germania, the new Caput Mundi, was set to overshadow Rome, Paris, and all great cities around the world, but then the economy crashed, taking his dreams with it. In a moment of catharsis, he understood that slavery had been among the main reasons for the collapse, and the most opportunistic of moves, he started speaking against it, asking for reform. As an unwanted consequence, he soon found himself the focal point of a large reformist movement advocating for change. Swept by current earned stronger than him, he decided to follow them desperately, hoping that no one would ever discover his mistakes. For good or ill, Albert Speer has, in his own way, reshaped Germany, forever changing both its architectural fashion and its society. He is, and forever will be, the Reich architect. The Reich is my greatest work. The Reich's last conquest. On the 19th of January 1962, Eberhard Kollner, using a rocket based on the A9A10 design from World War II, and as a member of a team led by acclaimed scientist Werner von Braun, became the first to ever land on the moon. While the space race has become a struggle between the Reich, Japan, and the USA, and while the Americans had managed to put the first man in space, shout out to Gl uh, John Glenn, the fear was proud to announce the German landing firmly plants the Reich as a victor in the competition, and that Kohlner, who was photographed giving the characteristic Nazi salute of the flag as the earth rose on the horizon, was a perfect example of a hero to Germany. A grand ceremony is planned in Germania to present Kohlner and his fellow astronauts with the Iron Cross, and a week of celebration has been declared across the Reich. While terse congratulations have been sent from America and Japan, President Nixon has vowed that the U.S. would be the 
first to create a permanent mission on the moon, and Japan shortly thereafter announced it would be the first one on Mars. The final frontier. Uh, 30 political power, we get a man on the moon, which gives us more PP and some more research speed. Beautiful. Economy, we're going to go ahead and up our construction cost, and we're going to do that again. We'll go ahead, yeah. We'll get a general, and here he is. This is a blonde beast. Formerly the protector of Bohemia Moravia, director of ESD, and one of the principal architects of the Final Solution, the very name Reinhard Heydrich is uttered in fear by German citizens and Slavic slaves alike. A man of infamously intellectual and cultured sensibilities, the Reichsführer of the German SS hides his insatiably animalistic hunger for power behind a cold sheen of quiet reservation. While his meteoric rise in influence and status throughout the 1930s and 40s surprised nobody, few could have predicted his ascension to the leadership of the Schutzstaffel would come as a result of Heinrich Himmler's failed coup in the 50s. Despite its many fractures, the party is unified behind its hatred of Heydrich and fear of his SS. Many believe it's only Hitler's respect for the man with the iron heart that enables him to maintain such a brutal a position of brutal authority, although others would point to different sources. Heinrich Himmler, tyrannical despot of the mysterious Burgundian order state, is theorized by many to be the true power behind the throne. While Heydrich and Himmler have their disagreements, both men advocate the return of true national socialism, by which they mean an end to the corruption of the party, and the imposition of a totalitarian state dedicated to the values of the SS. The attempts by Hitler's inner circle to reduce the influence of the SS have not been entirely unsuccessful, but as long as Reinhard Heydrich remains to be its leader, will not dissipate so easily. There is no problem which the Gestapo cannot solve. A man on the moon. And we're not going to be doing any of these focuses. Because something's about to happen. The Elder is launched. An assassin strikes at Adolf Hitler. During the 21st, 1962, as the Reich still celebrated its victory in the space race, Germania was frozen shock as an individual of Japanese origin entered the Fuhrer's office and attempted to assassinate Hitler. Armed with a handgun, the assassin, suspected to be a member of the Japanese Kenpai Tai, would have killed Hitler if one of his bodyguards had not happened to enter the Fuhrer's office off schedule. Hitler was shot once before the agent was killed and the Fuhrer was briefly hospitalized before being declared stable. While he survived, news leaked briefly that he had been killed in the attempt, and the Reichstag entered crisis without a leader. Members of a German RSD briefly locked down the city, armored cars filling the streets, and roadblocks ending all traffic for the day. The situation nearly turned to disaster when separate orders were given to both forces of the Wehrmacht and units belonging to the RHSA to occupy the city and ensure peace. When both groups, as well as the RSD, ordered the others to stand down, a 36-hour standoff occurred that nearly turned to open war in the streets had Hitler not recovered and given a personal order for all military units to return to their barracks. Bloodshed regar was shed regardless as several officials belonging to various factions were assassinated in the chaos. Victims of plans str sprung too soon. Heinrich Himmler denounced the chaos, claiming that the strike would have been prevented had the Reich not fallen to decadence and ordering SS units across Burgundy to prepare to ensure peace in Germany, supposedly only if Hitler had requests their assistance. The German SS, while supposedly independent from Hitler, has begun voicing support for his involvement. The incident had shown the dire need the state has for an heir to the Nazi Empire, but the Reichstag sits frozen, unable to decide. Not only has this been brought to light, however, but relations with Japan are now at an all-time low, and although Japan has denied sending the assassin, Wehrmacht leaders have been ordered to prepare readying for the worse. Our scars are revealed to the world. Oh no. How's our construction doing? Oh, beautiful. That's exactly what we need. And then we got Coral Donuts. The port city of Wilhelmshaven in houses some of the largest and oldest shipbuilding facilities of the entire world. Its inspiring dark dry docks are capable of building nearly anything. Everything from corvettes and minesweepers to, gi to a gigantic battleships have still left these docks, even when the ideas of germination was still a concept. Carl Donuts knows the production capabilities of his facilities as Oberbefehlshaber der Marina. He has set in dozens upon dozens of ships launched over the years, but this is a moment which will go down in history. Today, the largest and most powerful aircraft carrier of the Kriegsmarine, 
Christian Adler by Hitler himself is finally ready for its main voyage, a spectacle that will be broadcasted all over the Reich. Donitz knows what remains ain't unspoken. The Adler is not the latest capital ship, but the last for the foreseeable future, as Reich no longer afford to build new ships as per the 58 budget. Funding has been slashed in nearly all sectors. Ship maintenance payrolls are now all that the Kriegsmarine will be bankrolled for now. The ceremony was lovely. The Fuhrer himself thanked the Admiral profusely for his tireless dedication and work, with vague promises spoken about more funding for the Kriegsmarine soon, something he's done since 1958. Donut ceremonially nodded when he needed to and offered thanks when appropriate, as he had dozens of times before. Ever the mo model military man, he greeted the rest of the Fuhrer's entourage. He shook hands with Martin Bormann, first an upstanding gentleman. Really? Next, Albert Speer, an opportunistic Nazi, no more nor less. If Speer was opportunistic, then Donuts wondered what Goring would be considered. The man was looking surprisingly as prey as well. Spry as well. Last but not least, Reinhard Heydrich's cold, clammy hand. A blonde butcher, and a bastard to boot. The Admiral glanced back over at the Fuhrer who was blabbering to an aide. He was getting old, and old age was not treating him kindly. God help the Reich once Hitler was... Donuts pushed the thought out of his head. He was a navy man, first and foremost. Let the politics to those four schemers. Hoist the Reich Kriegs Flagge. There you go, these sports are coming along swimmingly. Today, the World Watch is one of the most significant moments of the 20th century prepares to take place. Almost a week after the Fuhrer shot an attempted assassination believed to have been orchestrated by Japan, Hitler today appeared on national television with the necessity for an appointed successor being exposed by the incident. Following days of heated debate, Hitler stood before the Reichstag to announce his choice. Four candidates have been speculated for days. Martin Bormann, expert politician and head of the party, is a staunch conservative and believed to be the most likely candidate. Also believed to be highly possible is the militarist Hermann Göring, the beloved uncle of a nation, if Hitler is a father. Another name being put forth is Albert Speer, one of the Fuhrer's closest friends, who has advocated for extensive reform within the Reich. Finally, some have even suggested the naming of Reinhard Heydrich as his successor would allow for the hostility between Germany and the SS to finally come to an end. After a lengthy, sometimes incoherent speech during which the Fuhrer spoke repeatedly about the strength of Germany, at times seeming to lose his train of thought, the Fuhrer lifted a trembling hand and declared his chosen successor would be Zabucha, Reinhard Heydrich. Alright, so we have the good old power struggle, in the aftermath of the recent assassination attempt on the Fuhrer's life. He has seen fit to name his official successor and designate upon him the matters of a state that he and his age cannot perform. So Fuhrer's condition worsens, it's almost assured that the responsibilities of the most high office will pass more and more to his successor. Yet, Hitler's chosen is not alone. The other men vie for the power of the Fuhrer, and their webs of influence have been spun far and deep. The German people may not know, but within the halls of the Volkshall, a silent war for the future of Germany rages. Victory in this conflict may bring advantage over the situation to further deteriorate. Influence points may be sent on several buffs for our faction, however it would be unwise to spend it all at once, as our remaining influence points could affect our starting position if the worst comes to worse. I have more decisions available as his condition worsens. I believe soon enough we'll have the new focus tree, right? For Heydrich, it was another day. Him counting down the seconds for the clock struck half past nine. For Germany, it was be the beginning of a nightmare. The fear would have announced his decision around 20 minutes ago if the old man had managed to get out of bed that day. The news would have covered it 10 minutes after. If the censors rushed it through, they would, as they would for one of his more lucid speeches. Five minutes after that, it'd be in New York and Tokyo. Ten minutes after that, it'd be flying across Russia and through Africa. But none of that mattered. Instead, Heydrich sat and stared at the clock, ticking dutifully towards the next moment, his eyes briefly flickering towards the telephone, segregated neatly from the rest at, at the, back left or, the back left quadrant of his desk, next to six pens of three different colors and a black marker in a perfect row alongside it. The Burgundian telephone, they called it. Himmler's line to Germany. To Heydrich, it was the mouth of the last true man in Germany, through which he spoke to Heydrich and to the world. The clock ticked past its mark, and within the second, the phone rang. Two seconds later, and Heydrich pressed it to his ear. The greatest patron of Germany's future relayed his words. Congratulations, mein Schula. It is time. <sighs> 
Following the recent attempt on the German Fuhrer's life by a suspected Kempeitai agent, the pressure upon the Fuhrer to name an official successor, the Reichstag to form the recognized choice, has been steadily building. After almost a week of debate and speculation, Adolf Hitler today appeared on live television from the Reichstag to announce to the world that his successor would be Reinhard Heydrich. Shock and outrage immediately consumed the Reichstag, with a quarter of the votes going against the nomination, another quarter abstaining, the first non-unanimous vote in the, its history. While some hailed this as an anti-hostility between Germany and the SS, only few are so forgiving, with most viewing Heydrich as little more than a puppet of Burgundy as riots erupt across Germany in response. <sighs> mein Gott. Well, we've gone ahead and completed the Butcher. The Fuhrer's proclamation of Reichsfuhrer SS Reinhard Heydrich as his successor, public opinion is firmly united against this choice, with only the most diehard Schutzstaff lunatics public supporting Heydrich's bid. An extremely controversial choice, Herr Heydrich has little to no non-existent support in Germany, which much, much of his su support coming from the Burgundian order state, and the Reichsfuhrer SS Heinrich Himmler. As the Fuhrer's health worsens, Herr Heydrich must move quickly to annihilate those who dare oppose and secure the Reich for himself and the Black Order of the SS. Next, we're going to have to uh, crush for protesters. In the aftermath of the Fuhrer's announcement, the Fatherland has experienced a sharp increase in the amount of anti-government pro-reformist acts of protest, along with the veracity of said protests. To secure the Fatherland, we must permanently halt the spread of ideals counter to na that of National Socialism. As a result, we must show no mercy towards protesters, as they themselves have exposed their anti-government leanings. They must and will be crushed. So, we'll get some political power, but we're going to lose some manpower. Let's see how we can figure out what that means. The Reichsfuhrer SS crossed his long legs, gently placing his slender fingers over one knee. The door suddenly swung open and Heydrich rose to his feet to give a sharp salute. Hitler shuffled into the room, muttering to himself. His hair was hanging from his clammy forehead like a dead rodent. His left hand trembled violently behind his back. The old man stared at Heydrich with those large eyes, two blue marbles pressed into pale clay. Heil Hitler! Heydrich announced. The Fuhrer coughed harshly into the back of his hand as he shuffled toward his successor. It is a pleasure to meet with you again, my Fuhrer. Your recovery has m brought much joy to my men, as has your wise decision to name me successor. Perhaps we should be seated? There is much to discuss. Our economy, our diplomacy, our very, very life must change if we are to save the Aryan race. The German Reich is infested with puppets. Our corpulent Reich Marshal has become a mouthpiece of those militarist buffoons, while Speer dances to the tune of those four Bolsheviks. National Socialism will not survive these traitors. <laughs> the man with an iron heart! <laughs> An Aryan in every sense of the word. A ruthless man in a sea of weaklings. <laughs> you of all people should know I cannot die! The Fuhrer glared at the Reichsfuhrer with feverish eyes. His trembling hands balled into a fist. <laughs> Hitler is Germany. When Germany is Hitler. If I die, the Jews will descend upon our carcasses like vultures. An eruption of rasping coughs exploded from his throat. Racking his old body, he clasped the armrest intensely, his face growing redder by the second. The door suddenly burst open, and a cluster of the Fuhrer's personal guards streamed into the room. Warkus Mish held on the Fuhrer's arm and pulled him to his feet, shooting a fearful glance at Heydrich. Before he could say anything, Hitler had been taken away, his satisfaction. Satisfied silence was punctuated only by the incessant ticking of a clock. Hitler's condition worsens. What is it with Burgundians and clocks? I never got that. I mean, Tabby with his clock. What, now we have Heydrich with a clock. Himmler being a fucking time Nazi makes sense. We got Strengeheim. As 1962 begins to draw on, and the government of the Reich remains locked in slow stagnation, the protests by student groups across the nation about slavery, the still failed economy, the constant border war in the Reich Kolmazarits, about the fear of war, and about a thousand other things raged on. With nearly a million students constantly marching, protesting and disrupting business, 
and countless others joining them, the Reich seems completely unable to cope with streets. While many in the government demand harsh action, nobody knows what real harsh action they can take to a movement so large and disorganized. While threats have been made against the protesters, they remain undeterred as their numbers swell. With no central authority, there is no head of, for the government to cut off. With the Orpo so disorganized, and with so many paramilitary groups trying to keep the peace, it's been a wonder. It's been a wonder the situation has yet to explode. At least this was the situation until a small army of protesters began getting rowdy with a group of Orpo officers in Aachen, and a small group of riot officers decided to open fire, open up the city armory, and quell the unrest. Forcefully, wait. What? Don't. Oh dear. <sighs> the Tag des Ferrats is what they're calling it. The Day of Betrayal. Betrayal against the people of the Reich by their leaders, their police, their military, by everyone. People in uh, police knock and took it upon themselves to open fire on a crowd of teenagers who had started a small riot outside a local Orpo station. What started as a police shooting has sparked into a massive riot across the city. Aachen is now burning as Orpo units there struggle to hold their lines against furious crowds of rioters. And with the military stepping in and declaring martial law and Orpo units ordered to stand down, large second sections of the city have been left to the mob. The actions h hasn't been limited to Aachen, with both protesters and oversells Orpo officers across the country taking up arms and inspiration. Most large cities of the Reich are now looking like a war zone, with condemnation protests and fellowship reaching as far as Moscovian. For the sake of Zephyr, calm, remain calm. I mean, Hydrix strikes me as a man who's remaining calm. Ran out with his uh, SS faction. We're doing some good work building the forts. We'll add some more here. This is going to be our... Because we start off the Great Bulgarian game, so it begins. I'm actually not too worried about this. I mean, we'll try to do well. But I'm not too worried if we lose it or not, because... Well, things might not last... <clears throat> the day began quietly. At dawn, a group of students gathered around the central SS office in Bonn, using typical student chants and yelling about democracy and vaguely protesting the newfound influence of the Schutzstaffel on the government. The crowd seemed to grow throughout the day. It had been one of the greatest marches in weeks, at least since Heydrich had been declared successor. Not surprising, ultimately. Yes, the student protested all authoritarian rule, but the common German family would simply live if their way of life did not seem to be threatened. Hitler... Th Heydrich threatened that, the prospect of truly living a Burgundian life, becoming a Spartan, dying on moss for the state. No, that was for Jews and Slavs, not an upstanding reformist Aryan. So the first time in what seemed like forever, middle class families began protesting. Timidly and at first in small numbers, but they grew and grew. By midday, there must have been a thousand people. They went on and on, chanting and chanting, finally died down a bit. A few departed. As soon as they did, three shots rang out from the SS building. Snipers. Three men began screaming. One went silent, the others quieted to a whimper. Three more shots, two more brief screams. Somewhere, a rapid gu fire gun went off. There was a stampede. A secondary school student was trampled trying to run. Dozens wailed. This was not the plan. This was not the plan. They had never opened fire in a crowd. Not like this. The square was silent, besides the f remaining few whimpers. Everyone had either fled or been shot. We live in a brave new world. <clears throat> the cacophony of clinking glasses and waves of forced laughter was giving Martin Bormann a headache. Among the two dozen thousand guests milling around and sitting at tables were a fair number of diplomats of both German and foreign extraction. He placed his speech notes on top of the podium with sweaty hands surveying the room in apprehension. The speech was short and simple, admittedly a bit bland. Bormann smiled to himself bitterly. He had never been able to march with striking visual imagery and exurbic wit of Goebbels' writings. At times like this, he almost missed the lecher's little rat. Gentlemen, Borman announced into the microphone, waiting a as a blanket of silence gradually fell upon the crowd. Zephyra! He turned to his right and saluted. The guests followed suit, rising to their feet and saluting to various degrees of hastiness. 
Adolf Hitler shuffled towards the podium and grasped it with two trembling hands. Recent events may herald a diplomatic shift for the Reich. Bormann's blood ran cold as Hitler looked up and eyed the hall in confusion. There. There's Ernst. He, he told me he would be here. Bormann strode over to the podium and the place not behind the fear's back, gently leading him away. The old man's vo body was violently quivering. I think... I think I was at your wedding! <laughs> he exclaimed loudly, his rasping voice revading throughout the hall. Confused murmurs erupted in the crowd. Are you still in the SA? <laughs> Forgive me, gentlemen! Well, the hero exclaimed, swiftly taking the podium as Bormann and Mish led Hitler through the exit. <laughs> the fear was actually given my speech. Allow me to continue. The real question is, uh, are any of us still in the SA? You see, the Reich's diplomatic progression can be mirrored in some way to the evolution of the SA. A disaster averted? Perhaps for now, but for now, but Hitler's voice still hurt, is weakening. Alright, um... Let's go ahead and smile beside Hitler. To show the party... To show not only the party, but the nation that her Heydrich is worthy of Fuhrer's proclamation, we must show the population that we do indeed have the Fuhrer's approval. And they are therefore legitimate. Therefore, we shall smile beside the Fuhrer and present her Heydrich as a loyal national socialist who truly represents the Fuhrer's political will and a testament and a man. And and testament, and a man who can truly lead the Reich into glory once more. There we go. So we can divert some infantry equipment or do strategic fort building. I'm not worried about fort building. We'll probably be able to build as many forts as we need. The plan is, um, because we have uprisings in Alsace-Lothurgen, Alsace Mosulan, and Luxembourg. That's going to be some of our territory. And we'll also get this bit of, uh, you know, we'll get Danzig and Prussia, basically. Um, everything west here. Now, this is to cut off, really. But if we keep some troops here, hang on to Danzig. Not Konigsberg, because student protesters rise up there, but Danzig. We'll be able to build some forts there, and hold on. I'm taking a lot of inspiration from um, Einstein's uh, setup for this. And then we'll build, build some forts along here so we can be really well fortified. The so-called monster uniform of the Wehrmacht, Field Marshal Ferdinand Schorner, made a name for himself during the Second World War as a talented strategist and brutal commander, leading troops in the invasions of both Poland and the Soviet Union. Despite this, while glory in this war was heaped upon by Erwin Rommel, Hans Beidel, and even Hermann Göring himself, the Field Marshal's name, as it's known today, is not looked upon favorably within wide, wider bureaucratic circles. Ever ambitious, Schorner's desire nothing less than be ahead of the entire Wehrmacht itself. Though a brilliant military man, his skill was not enough. His dreams of promotion were dashed against the rocks of reality by his cataclysmic performance during the West Russian War of the 50s. Considered a failure by many, and generally despised by both subordinates and superiors alike, Schorner is nonetheless forged a path as an influential leader in the Reich's militarist faction, is considered to be Hermann Göring's number one man. To the likes of Hans Speidel, who despises, his clique is little more than a psychotic band of saber rattlers. To Schorner and his followers, however, they are the sabers of the king and dying German, German. A noble band of warriors demanding greater power for the Wehrmacht and an increased sphere of German influence in Europe and beyond. Deserters get no mercy from him. Well, there we go. We'll get some new generals assigned. It's not going to last for too long, but we might as well do it. We'll get Otto. Um, Adolf. Hmm. Today, as has happened on every March, a 20th of March, since that fateful day, the Reich remembers Josef Goebbels. As time passes, many say the memory fades, but none of the Reich can forget the tragic and heroic figure that stood with the Fuhrer until his dying moments. As he has every year, Hitler gave a speech. While his hands shook and he sometimes stumbled on the words, they are no less and as emotional and powerful as they are every year. Over a thousand stood at the ceremony outside of the Goebbels' Den Denkmal. Well, 
where Himmler gave his speech from the marble podium in the front of the bronze statue of the late great filmmaker. While the thousand citizens, soldiers, and dignitaries stood in remembrance for the murder director, famously and allegedly killed by French partisans almost a decade ago, the most important men of the Reich soon gave speeches. Speer, Goring, and Bormann all talked with tears by Shen and the news of their dear friend. Of the happiness they felt when his murderers were caught, and how they will never forget the great works of art that he had produced for the Reich, while Reinhard Heydrich represented both himself and Heinrich Himmler, who was not he was not able to make the memorial, was not invited to give a speech, he did leave a cadre of half hundred SS officers to lay flowers upon the base of a statue. The day ended with a slight bit of rain, and a healthy reminder of a great friendship that was terribly ended. Vedenka Dasenda. Now that's one last person we have to worry about in this power struggle. We'll get some more land forts. And we'll get some more building here as well. Jolly-o! That's not good, mate. So we will control that. <clears throat> Hitler, Theo the Reich, stood up to the podium and had a coughing fit. When he was done, he looked at the crowd, peered at them for a second, and then looked down at the script place on the podium before him. <sighs> IVFM, the capacity of my appointed successor. He looked gazed and asked a bodyguard next to him what that name was. Uh, Heydrich Meinfuhrer. He said it as if what he had to say that, as if it was what he had to say frequently, without the usual fear when addressing Führer. The, the capacity of my appointed successor, Heydrich. As a fear and that will be my last most unfortunate absence. The man has served me loyally and will continue to serve the Reich. The man is not only a vanguard of the Aryan race, but a true enemy of Jews the world over. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Ver I... Th thank you. Hitler stumbled off the stage to confuse him of the crowd. Well, at least we've got the second endorsement. Um. Hmm. Let's implicate the militarist. To successfully seize the apparatus of the state, we must first do away with our opponents in the Wehrmacht to continue to cause us considerable heartache. Given our unbridled control over the Reich Main Security Office, RSHA, we have the capacity to easily falsify evidence and issue arrest warrants with little resistance. Therefore, we shall recover supposedly lost documents which seem to implicate the Wehrmacht's hawks in a plot against the Reich. Well, that'll be good. Okay, let's look for some opportunities. Although we're the world's foremost superpower, our navy does not hold up this day or age. Outdated, massively under-equipped, many of our surface ships that sit anchored at port. Uh, what are the options? This time, there's no feasible way to do it. There's some... You can f allocate the funds elsewhere, focus on some maintenance, or the Fatherland deserves the best. The Fatherland deserves the best. We have more influence than Spia, which is good. Not the best, because, uh... I mean, influence isn't the most vital thing. I I've come to realize... Ooh. Otto Remmer, born, born August 18th, 1912, is a career soldier in Germany's here. Remmer joined as a commission officer in 1932, just as the Nazi party was rising in prominence. A former Hitler youth leader, the Second World War would seem deployed on nearly every front of the Reich of Fadon. Participating in Poland, France, the Balkans, Remmer impressed his spirits during Operation Barbarossa, where he led his own regiment in Ukraine with distinction. The following decade, Remmer managed Claus Wade to commanding his own corps just in time for the West Russian Revolutionary Front invasion of Okhim Muscovian. Again, he led with distinction in the fight against the communists. Remmer's corps were also instrumental in sabotaging Himmler's coup. He and his men arrested more than in their fair share of SS formations when Spidell sent the orders. Remmer has not been sitting idly since, however. Ferdinand Schoener made acquaintance with Remmer shortly after the market crash of the 50s, with two aligned thanks to their staunch opposition to any and all military cuts. As now, Remmer acts as Schoener's right hand man for the most m militant of the German command staff. Highly intelligent and ambitious, Remmer is certainly a man to watch. 
An opportunist at art, the role he is yet to play within the Reich is unknown for better or for worse. The state needs an iron hand to guide it. We are Germany's iron fist. That's a new event. I don't think I've gotten that before. Um, What do we want to focus on? I guess that. Why not? Uh-oh. Hitler is not doing very good. Dr. Karl Brandt wiped the sweat from the his forehead as fear began his speech, flanked by two grand podiums. There were only a few dozen people in the crowd, but not a single one was unimportant. Reich Minister Werner Naumann and representatives of the RMVP stood with famous artists and reporters of a straight press. Hitler's pompous adjutant, Julius Schraub, was shooting daggers at Martin Bormann, who was watching the Fuhrer like a hawk. They were all nodding respectfully as Hitler began to discuss the late painter Adolf Wiesel, pretending to ignore the two trembling hands thrust awkwardly behind his back. Despite Brandt's severe protestations, Schaub had insisted that Hitler travel to Führer's museum and Linz to officially open the new art museum. Including a newly commissioned sculpture of my successor. Now, unfortunately for the young men here today, it's a curse of a great artist to die before their time. Adolf Ziegler passed away only a few years ago in Anna Brecker's recent death has vexed the world of sculpting immediately. The crowd slowly turned to the left podium where Arno Brecker was frozen still, his eyes darting fearfully around the room. Brandt wiped his forehead with a trench cloth. Many of you are too young to remember the days of degenerate art! The fear tra trailed off. His whole body suddenly tightened up and he staggered into the right hand podium. Brandt's blood turned to ice. Hitler's arms violently jerked off and his head snapped forward, stammering into the marble podium with a sickening crack. A grasp of horror exploded from the audience. The fear crumbled to the floor, blood pouring from his forehead, arms and legs still writhing. A woman screamed. A man yelled a curse. Rokas Mish was ye yelling at the crowd to stay back. Borman rushed forward and slipped onto the blood with a yell, staggering to Schaub. Brandt turned Hitler onto his side and inspected the wound on his forehead. It was just a cut. The doctor shot Schaub a glare as the uproar reached a fever pitch. <sighs> Fuck. So I'm waiting for this one event that should be happening hopefully soon. So we're winning the first round in Bulgaria. Funderbar. Um, we can train some... Actually, we'll wait for next time. And we won that. We could fix some riots. We'll frame the FF for attacks. Uh, we want to wait for the event where we can divert some troops from the here. And how is the fort building? Wunderbar, wunderbar. We're building some back again in Alsace Lof the Gin. We want more about coastal forts. Uh, implicate the militarists. And we'll do some light forts here, because the plan is you want to kind of try to... um. Excuse me. Where's construction? There it is. Where's construction? Do some forts along here. Actually, let's not do that. Just want to check to see if I could do that. Now that I know I can, I don't think I will, but it's good to know. Um, Let's shoot the liberals. It's one way to own them, am I right? With the announcement of the Reichsfeuer SS Heydrich as the Fuhrer's successor, the low summoned degenerates of a liberal movement had decided to intensify their protest over the past few months. All the attempts to halt the protest have been futile, therefore we must use brutal methods. It's time that the Reich's liberals bite the non-proverbial bullet. These traitors are like are, are to be like the dogs. Are to be put down like the dogs they are, excuse me. So lose some weekly manpower, but gain some stability. So you know that's worth it. Civil Rights Act of 1962. Okay. Let's spark a fire. See if that gets us done. Uh, or gets us there, I should say. Land forts. Some basic stuff over the Rhine. And we'll get some more building in 
is this part Lorraine? Mondre Lorraine? I think this is Al Alsace, and then this is Lorraine. I think that's how it works. It might be the the opposite, honestly. I don't know. Oh, we got a perfect 10. Based. Oh, they got 9. What nerds. Mongolian Civil War. I'm gonna shoot the liberals. Combine operations. Beautiful. Brazil wins the cup. Man, we got all this shit figured out. Out and finished the same day. Anti-tank. Uh, anti... That's a long time to research and improve anti-air. Holy shit. Well, we might as well do it. I don't know what else we can do. Collapse of Triumvirate. Basic anti-tank. Get some improved anti-tank. Shoot the liberals. Um, let's intimidate some politicians. Regardless of race, creed, and ethnicity, politicians are all like Mordegard. They're all spineless, lying cowards. It's clear to the to Hydric that if we are to convince the Rex politicians to join us on a crusade against the generosity Nancy Nazi party sentiments, we must use intimidation tactics. We shall return to the olden days of intimidation that were successful decades prior as we first establish our hold over the German nation. There we go. So yeah, we're gonna have a lot of population. <clears throat> Hi, Hitler. Ren Hardrick spoke so awfully down, spoke softly down the phone. This is the Reich Führer SS. I understand that the Führer has permanently moved to the Berghof in pursuit of medical isolation, but it is his current medical state. Hell, Hitler. <sighs> my my apologies, Reich Führer. I wasn't expecting such a call. I'm um. Expecting to see a turnaround, as long as I'm not interrupted by the likes of Ulysses Schau, that is. He keeps accusing me of undermining his authority. I'm surprised he hasn't been hanged for his insolent yet. That is all, Dr. Brandt. He plays his phone the phone down and presses his fingers to together. The fear is in incapacity to be exploited to his full ex extent. He scanned the documents before him. Making Borman look weak and incompetent was simple. He just needed to ignore any orders directed to him by the fear secretary while strengthening the SS in the process. Gorg's faction drew its power from its unity, but a secret brothel recording obtained by the SD would soon change that. The Reich interior minister, Wilhelm Stuckart, one of Goring's closest friends, had been caught on tape explicitly mocking Schorner and Remmer, their strongest military allies. As for Speer, the SD had also uncovered an illicit affair between one of Speer's reformist technocrats and the Ministry of Economics and a, un and a university student with guys ties to radical liberal movements. Upon the leaking of a scandal, Gestapo agents will waste no time in spreading rumors of this affair well, is not an isolated incident. That the relationship between the party reformers and the liberal students is more than ideological. Without Hitler to hide behind, Speer would have to fend for himself. This race has only just begun. Yeah. Land forts. I'm trying to figure out how many we want to build in all these places. Level 6 forts is solid for now. I think next I'll get working on getting these up to level 4. One in the desert. I can avoid treat a former ally. Yeah. So. Madagascar, quest medical equipment, yeah, send them, send them what they fucking want, I guess. Oh. Excuse me? A uh, nine bitter. There we go, okay. Turn three, we won. Eliminate the bandits. Or, and now we'll eliminate the bandits. It's a power struggle. Let's bring some here regiments to our side. Gain two additional units. Hitler is currently severely ill. We can look for some opportunities. Expansion of slave camps. We'll uh we'll take care of this discreetly. 
Next, let's expel some ambassadors. Should we reclaim the Reich from regeneracy, we must exterminate all aspects of foreign influence from within its borders. In accordance with this message, we have no choice but to expel the ambassadors of our opponent opposition nation states, who may eventually attempt to aid factions opposed to the SS as we continue to solidify our ever expanding grip over the Greater German Reich. There we go, officers expelled. Um, we can't train any guys, so I don't know why I'm looking at this. Boredom, perhaps. Building some guys in Morseland. Wunderbar. Some good old forts. These are naval forts. We want to focus on the coastal ones. There we go. Um... Thanks, I don't know. <sighs> Expelling the ambassadors. Oh, great. The effects from students quelled. How's our economy doing? It's good. Um, let's pay off some of that debt. And then we'll up our civilian spending a bit more. The SNP holds on in Scotland. We'll build as much guns as we can because we're probably going to need a big stockpile of guns, I think. The Reichstag, the Diet of the Greater German Reich, is a continual thorn in the side of the Reichswehr SS Heydrich and the Schutzstaffel as a whole. Given how it's a representative body, it has the power to directly influence and challenge the government, something which its members aren't afraid to do, as shown with the Diet's opposition to Herr Heydrich's appointment. Therefore, if we are to truly control the Reich, we must dissolve the Reichstag as it's no longer necessary, oftentimes disrupting the work of the government. So we have Rubicon, which I believe is going to or further what we're going to be crossing soon enough. Keep working on getting more units to our side. That's really what we need to focus on right now. Turn four, we won. We'll, le we'll let this be. It doesn't matter. Otherwise. Yeah, just go ahead and dissolve that shit, and construction. I'll get to the effects of politicians silenced. We'll build up to four there, actually. And this is very good. Very good. We'll bring the Kier regiments to our side. The USA declares war on Guiana. The orders were curt, simple and precise. They came in a flurry through official and unofficial channels. Following the Reichstag with a contradictory sense of liberation and fear, bureaucrats and politicians milled around like a dying haze. There was little else to do. The new Fuhrer had not been bothered to give a pompous speech or issue for a formal announcement. New Germany was in the making, and he couldn't afford to be distracted by the egos of irrelevant relics of decadent era. They served no benefit towards the creation of a true Aryan state, and so they didn't matter. This new truth took slightly longer to reach the collective indignation of the Reichstag. The bullet corpse of a dead republic clung so desperately to its in existence, as though it hadn't already ceased to exist three decades ago. Inexorably, however, reality fell to the floor for all to see. By order of the Führer, the Reichstag is dissolved effective immediately. There we go, Rubicon. We'll go ahead and mobilize the SS starting next. The Führer's choice to appoint Heydrich as a successor is clearly desires a truly national socialist state under the management of a black order, though many happen to disagree. To ensure our legitimacy remains intact, we must make the first move in this nationwide game of chess. We have to make the first move. Therefore, it's time to mobilize with shoot Stoffel and prepare the way for Heydrich's Führership. There we go. Look for some opportunities. Uh, funnel more money to the SS. 
funnel as much fucking money as we can. Swing some more regiments to our side. And uh, we're going to have to start cutting it here, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you as always for watching. However, if you liked this video, go ahead and leave a like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you want to see more of this content in the future, go ahead and hit the subscribe button for more uploads every weekday, as well as every Saturday. If you have any comments, feedback, concerns, anything of the sort, go ahead and leave in the comment section below. I read all the comments I get and appreciate any all feedback you might have for me. Um, and again, if you aren't subscribed, please do, because I am close to getting that 1,000 subs, and I want to try to do it by the end of the year. So if you get out me at out and getting that goal, I'd much appreciate it. If you have any comments, feedback, concerns, comment section below. Oh, I read all the comments I get. Appreciate any old feedback you might have for me. If you want to chat or play games, I have a Discord. If you want to see me do sorts of life, I have a Twitch. If you want to send me a few bucks every month, I have a Patreon. All those links are down linked below. Thank you as always for watching, ladies and gentlemen. My name has been Dogboat33, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.